do you believe so many artists fall to this notion that they have to follow what the industry tells them is the standard? Thank you so much for doing this. Oh, Thank thanks you. for having me. Yes, of Goodbye. course. You are an incredible, remarkable artist. Thank you. You started as, as a rapper. Mm -hmm. You're a singer, songwriter. How did you know that entertainment was the path that you were supposed to pursue? I just, I didn't know that entertainment was the thing. I knew I wanted to sing. Mm -hmm. And that was, that was, that's always the thing for mm -hmm. me. Ah, the stuff. It's the stuff. I think, um, it did speak to me halfway through everything that this is a way to to do the stuff and impact in the way that I saw was helpful mm. in a wide scale, mm -hmm. you know? So it wasn't like, okay, it wasn't necessarily like, okay, I have something to say. I think the best way to do it is to go be a world-famous singer. It was like, people seem to respond. Yeah. When I do it in my brightness. Yeah. Let me do this in my brightness. Let me do this full out every time, yeah. you know? Yeah. And the ways kept opening from that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. You have a show yeah. on Apple. I love it, by the way. The gra <laughs> From the graphics, just to the content, it's just so good. What inspired you to start that? Well, purple and yellow are my favorite colors. We talk about the graphics. Purple yes. and yellow, since I was a child. It's so good. It is. And not because Lakers or nothing, but like, yeah. I, mean, I live in LA, not because yes. Lakers. But more because, it was just, those are my favorite colors. One sunshine and the other's royalty. Yeah. That's what I find out they mean. But as a kid, that was always, those were my colors. And Prince Purple. Okay. Not yes. any pur Prince Purple. Prince okay. Purple, so, yes. Yeah, so that was, those are just my favorite colors. They've morphed into golds and, and violets, which is more on the black side of it. To me, it's another one of my favorite colors. Mm -hmm. But So that's, that's, that's why I keep the aesthetic, you know. It, it's a vibe. It means something, yeah. Yes. Um, the show, man, the way it even came about was, was just pure God. We're sitting, and I've told my team like three, four years ago, we should have a show. We should really approach Apple about a show. Da, 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 da. It wasn't time. Three or four years later, I had a friend say to me, you need a radio show or something because your musical knowledge is way too, it's like a library. Yeah. I'm like, okay, okay, okay. Another friend goes, yeah, you're like a jukebox fan. I'm like, mm -hmm. you and the playlists? Okay, it's yeah. borderline annoying. I'm like, well, don't. <laughs> so... The third time I heard that, I said to the team, we should do it and we should base it around this, which was at the time reggae. Mm -hmm. I had a reggae album out, my last album, and we were like, let's do reggae, let's talk to different artists, let's do that. We took the idea to Apple and they were like, we got one bigger. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How do you feel about this? Yes. And I was like, well, if this is, they said this is uh, doing a radio show five days a week, um, play whatever you want, mm -hmm. bring your vibe to it. We just like what you're about. Yeah. And we'll help, and help you hone it, we'll help you build it, we'll help you move it forward. Yeah. And it's become the Estelle show. I was trying to give it different names. Mm -hmm. And I feel like this happens This happens every time I try to take myself out of the front center of it. Like, I try to give another name to right, something. Like, oh, right, 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 right. something, something yeah. related to something that I do, but not the Estelle thing. Sure, yeah. And God's like, no, it's the Estelle, get out, what are you doing? Like, yep. And so they said, no, it's the Estelle show. I was like, mm -hmm. okay, well, it's the Estelle show. There's something I would love to highlight. You said in an interview, mm -hmm. um, and as we know, our culture has this proclivity to tell us how we're supposed to show up, when we're supposed to do our job, mm -hmm. how to keep up with the Joneses, how, what it looks like, what it should be, and this is what you have to do in order to be successful. Yeah. You said boldly and yet so profoundly, we're not overrunning my time with your version of what I'm supposed to be as an artist. Mm -hmm. AKA, you won't, basically, you won't dictate what I will do and what I won't do. Yeah. Why do you believe so many artists fall to this notion that they have to follow what the industry tells them is the standard? Well, because I think there's two sides to the industry, yeah. two really, really uh, heavy and bright sides to the industry. Mm -hmm. It's not dark, it's all, yeah. it's all light. Um, so one side is the creative, the creative mm -hmm. who's there being in their magic, mm 
Mm-hmm. And at the point where they hit, they gather their way enough to channel something great, mm-hmm. beauty comes out, right? And, yeah. and they're successful at it. There's the other side who wants to manage that and make that into money, mm-hmm. right? And both do a good job of making it look really successful. Mm-hmm. However, as the creative, we're taught to watch our backs so much and yeah. follow the business and look at the business and, you know, that we forget that no matter what that does, we still have to work on this part, right? And this is the part that actually makes sense, the creative part. Yeah. So you're kind of swept up into, well, these people are here for a reason to guide me and that they should know best, mm-hmm. except after a certain period of time, they know what they know and that's great, but you also know what you know. Mm-hmm. And that should be something that you pay attention to and sit in and be comfortable in. Yeah. Now it's not within their interest to give you that confidence. Yeah. It's, you know, they want to make sure you hang on to them and... You know, but then when you look at the artist after a certain age, it starts to become their world order, per se, mm-hmm. and in mm-hmm. a good way. Mm-hmm. Um, you look at Grace, you look at Stephen Wonder, they all have their teams that surrounded them that were d- told what to do because mm-hmm. they were clear about their vision and about who they were, mm-hmm. who they were versus their vision, over their vision, I should say. Yeah. And that, to me, is why they were powerful, why they were, why they are the legacy artists that we want to follow. So why would I keep going down the line of being told how and when and based on somebody else's version of what they think I am, apart from my personal sovereign knowledge of myself, why would I dis- like dishonor myself like that? Mm-hmm. And, and when you figure out in the grand scheme of things and you get into your spirit and you get into yourself, it becomes like, well, am I dishonoring myself in every, and look at my actions every day and how am I honoring myself with that? Yeah. And so that makes all the decisions easy. Like, right. I don't have to do that. Were you ever fearful that if you went this path of peace, if you follow <laughs> the path of peace, because yeah. that's essentially what you do, exactly. that you're, you would be putting your career at risk? Yeah, yeah. But, okay, so personally, I, I don't have as much fear as everybody else because, well, as a lot of other people, because I came from independence. Mm. Like, as an artist, I had my own record deal. And my own record label, and I was doing things at a certain level where I was very successful on my own. You know, when I looked at all my peers at different stages, now obviously success grows. Mm-hmm. But for me, I was I knew what to do. Mm-hmm. If I press up a record, I mix it, I master it, I put it up, I do my best market in it. Mm-hmm. I don't give up on it. Mm-hmm. I know all the things to do. So cool. If you don't get it, if you don't understand it, and you don't want me to grow, I'm still gonna go do the thing. Mm-hmm. You don't have a jurisdiction on my talent. Or my how did core. you get to the mentality, though? Even <laughs> though, yes, you did it on yeah. your own, yeah. how did you even have the courage to do it on your own and know that, you know, believing in yourself, if you will? How did yeah. you combat any unbelief? Yeah. Um, the broad statement is God. The broad statement is God. The broad is God. The spirit is, is listening to... Come on my intuition, listening to my Holy Spirit, right? And then it just became building on confidence. And there was a period where I would consistently ask for help or second guess myself. Mm -hmm. And then it was like, there's a book for that. There's a Google for that. There's a proven uh, point of view about that. Do the thing. Stop second guessing yourself still, right? And the more I did that, the better I became at it. Mm-hmm. the more I was sure of myself. Mm-hmm. That's what I say, like, you build on the confidence and you build on, and then you build on the success. But it just started to dawn on me after a certain period of time, especially in music, that, yeah, um, nobody's sure. And no one has the golden ticket or the golden rule. The highest of the highest of artists are still figuring this out yeah. day by day. Yeah. It's not promised to anyone. Mm-hmm. So would you say, if someone's watching, that they want to maybe slow down? They're an artist or they're an actress or just yeah. playing out in the industry, but are fearful mm. of checks coming in, yeah. of visibility, yeah. of wanting to be seen, <laughs> but yet know that they what they feel in their soul, that instinct, that discernment, that that yeah. you know, that clip from God that you actually need to take a pause. You actually mm. need to slow down. What is one tool that you can give them? Yeah. besides following that spirit and following that... Following that fear part, right? Yeah. Uh, break it down. Mm, right? So That's good. You know, like you said, visibility. Is this why you're doing it? Uh, money. 
Your needs are your needs are always met. Your needs are always met. Your needs are always met. You just have to be open to it coming in ways that you are not expecting. Your needs will always be met. Yeah. When you're following, if God's telling you to calm it down and sit down for a second, trust He's got your bills paid. He's got your things taken care of without fail. Now don't be stupid. You know, don't don't like not follow when He says, "Hey, yo, take that gig," or "Hey, do that thing." I'm just giving you some money real quick, or you know. But you, I have never, and I, and that was something I had to deal with, coming from being super broke as a kid. And, you know, there's nine of us as kids. My mom worked so many jobs, mm-hmm. and we worked our whole lives too. There was always this fear of like, I'm not gonna have money, I can't pay. And then I looked back. My mortgages have always been paid. Mortgages have always been, like my bills have always been good. Whether they were on time or not is a different thing. Right. But, they've always but, been but they still cover. Yeah, right. that covered. same, same. Right. So we might do some plus and minus over know, here, it but it's gonna get done. You know, so when you look at things like that, and you take all the the extra things that the expectations, the perceptions the caring about whether people see you or not, mm. and you're just more worried about doing God's will, or you're more worried about fulfilling your actual purpose, like, that takes 70% of the pressure off. Yeah. Immediately. Ugh. You know, I like, in between albums, I take my time. I'm still old school, I guess. I'm working on getting it down from five years to two years. Proud of myself with my down to, like, three. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But in between, it would always be that visibility thing. Mm. I had to just quickly... Jump out of that. Like, it, I, when I turn up, it's quality. And when I show up, it's great. Yeah. And it does the thing that it needs to do and I'm what I'm here for. Yeah. And that's what I aim for. So I take the time off. Mm-hmm. You know, I get to live a little bit. Mm-hmm. I get to rediscover new parts that have changed since putting that song out or that the music out or whatever. And then I get to, like, explore life, like, live a bit. Mm-hmm. I don't think that any artist should aim to especially on today, where it's, it's widely pushed mm. to be 24-7 outside. Mm-hmm. Like, have a profile of something. Widely pushed to do as opposed to be. That's, the, that's exactly the phrase. Work on the B part. Work on, Work the, on B the B part, part. So that when you start the doing, you can sustain the doing that you, that you because want. Because you have things based off of the B. To talk about, mm-hmm. I, you know, I, I lived this when I was just being. Mm-hmm. You want, you want some interesting stuff from me. This, what the hell was happening to me when I was off? Here's some things to talk about, guys. You know, um, and it just allows you to kind of just make your mistakes and or grow successfully, mm-hmm. and develop memories and build an actual life. Mm-hmm. You know, um, in between, I'm a big fan of that. Yeah, I will, I will zoom in. On my home, like as in like you see this much of my crib. Yeah, <laughs> with like this totally. part, this part, this part, and this part. Yeah, of my living room or <laughs> yeah. on my, you know, I don't none of that. I'm good. Yeah. You know, totally. like, let me have something for me. Mm-hmm. And when I pull up with the thing that's meant for you, here you go. What do you do in those moments of uncertainty? Because I'm sure you have them as you're on your own wavelength. Mm-hmm. The uncertainties flare up. What do you lean on, or and what do you do in those moments? I just, I tend to think everything is perfect. Like, I really go to that everything is perfect and everything is exactly as it's meant to be moments. Uh, uh, Mary J was the first of her kind, right? First of her type of art. Yes. She pulled influences from Anita and all of those, um, and Aretha and different people, but she was the first of her, right? Prince was the first of him. He pulled influences from James Brown and uh, Lil Richard and... But he was the first of him, right? I'm mm-hmm. using music because... Yeah, sure. No, I'm I'm tracking. But I feel like if you're doing something great or you're listening and you're trying to, trying to listen and you are making efforts to follow your purpose, there's always going to be that out the blue thing that comes that you're not sure about, but you do it anyway. And you spend like a year to six months, three, four years, second guessing that moment. Like, why did I wear red hair in that video? Right. Why do I wear this lipstick? What the heck? What like, is this? Why did I sound like that? Why did I sing that song? Mm-hmm. And then someone will come out of the blue and be like, you know, when I was... And that's the reason you did that. Mm-hmm. You know, when I was... You made me feel like I could wear red hair. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's the reason I did that. Yeah. You know, like... Hope, like So going back to those moments mm-hmm. of the bigger why yeah. is when, you know, when you are having those moments of uncertainty. Mm-hmm. But let me just remember... There's always a there's a bigger thing in get out the way. Yeah. Play your part, get out the way. 
Do your part, get out the way. Yeah. So now, don't you sit there pointing up blocks energetically or for yourself mm. because you want to overthink it because, you know, you know everything. Right. You don't know nothing. We, we don't. You know, thing. We just are here playing our part. Playing our part. Try to be cute. Try to keep our skin clear. And flow. <laughs> oh, that's so good. I don't have it. Yes. Yeah. Switching gears a bit. And I prayerfully believe and hope that we're at this end, end of the pandemic. Not, not right. sure if we are. What was that season like for you? I was grateful that I had halfway began and was comfortable with my skin mm -hmm. because it was a lot of alone time. Mm -hmm. I'm an artist, I'm outside. And when I'm outside, I'm on, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it was like a good, intense... I was at the beginning of learning to balance who I was, who I was as far as switching on and off. Mm -hmm. Uh, with just being comfortable in a harmonic space, right? Mm -hmm. Just being comfortable with not being too high or too low, not being, I'm up and I'm outside today, so da da da, -da mm -hmm. with, I'm just here, yeah. you know, and being okay with just being here. That's good. You know? yeah. And so I got to kind of like really work on that stuff. So it was a lot of, a lot of red wine, a lot of DJ, a lot yeah. of Instagram, and checking in with the homies, uh, not caring too much or having to worry about everything and everyone else, mm. calling my family, working through things with my mom, making sure that, because I've lived so far away from everyone, it was right. just me. So finding that time, I finally had all this time to sit down and FaceTime everyone every day mm. and check in with what was going on more than I ever had. Yeah. And it was a good year of reconnecting, yeah. you know? So I, and I wasn't scared of it. I wasn't as depressed or I wasn't like, as a lot of people went through a lot of things with the years. Mm -hmm. And so I was happy that I'd started it pre-pandemic because when it came time to just sit down and be by myself, yeah. I was like, this is nice. Mm -hmm. This is really nice. This is actually okay. Was there Neither ever this. a moment <laughs> of, oh God, am I going to make it through this? No. It was always, yeah. I needed this. It was, I literally, there were moments of like, oh goodness, this is the fifth day of inside the house. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to take a walk around the block though. I can go in, the, in my little back patio. And then I bought a house in the middle of it all. So that was the other thing. Mm -hmm. I'd never really concentrated on where I wanted to be in the world, mm -hmm. which is part of my, my own personal, that's why I said the awakening, everything. I was very comfortable, but also sad. Mm. moving around everywhere, yeah. right? It never felt like I needed to settle and have roots. Because mm. my roots were in London, right? Yeah. And then it became obvious that I was probably going to stay here. Mm -hmm. So all the action had begun to cement that yes. I was going to be in the US now. Yes. <laughs> you know, like 12 years into being here, mm -hmm. which is nuts. Oh, <laughs> but that part. So mm -hmm. I managed to like That's focus good. and get grounded and be home and decide I want to be with someone and I want husband and I want to have a baby and I want, like those things that you know weren't expected were you know even for myself I was kind of like I mean I say it but like do I really want to right you know sure. so my actions started actually following my heart mm, you know and I had good. that time to do it yeah and it's just invaluable mm -hmm. still have that time so. yeah you said recently in an interview that life is a soundtrack yeah. If we were on your soundtrack and listening to your soundtrack, <laughs> okay. what song would we be listening to right now? Ooh, this is difficult. <laughs> um, probably yeah. some Stevie Wonder. Yeah. Oh, oh geez, this is hard. All right. <laughs> Take your time. I'm a jukebox, right? Hold on. Okay, so the first song that came to mind and then the second one... Um, is This Love by Stevie Wonder and mm. the second one, I mean, Is This Love by Bob Marley and the second one, um, I Love Everything About You by Stevie Wonder. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. That's this. I just, yes. Like, and just on some, I'm not the, I was never the most expressive, you mm. know, in any of the formats of love, but I would physically do things mm -hmm. for people. Mm -hmm. Like, you get that I love you, right? Cool. You, I did the thing. I didn't say it. I didn't hug you, but like, you get it. Yeah. And they'd be like, no, I didn't. I didn't get it. I didn't. All these boyfriends, or I, I didn't get that you love me. I just mm. saw that you did things, and mm. it's my job to do things. I'm just like, well, I don't know how to do the other things. Mm. So I've been on a crash course for the past seven years of like learning to emote and learning to, you know, be more expressive. Mm. And so I play those songs, but I haven't been playing them a lot recently. But um, those two songs just came 
to my spirit, I guess, when you ask that. That's good. So, yeah. Where do you believe you are mentally? Calm. Calm. Very calm. At the beginning of this week, I was having a moment about being outside a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, being outside in the sense of like, all the events are starting to come back up and work is starting to yes. kick back up. Yes. Music and everyone wants you to be back outside. And while I'm comfortable in my, like, I'm just here, mm-hmm. everybody else is kind of, so a lot of people are still kind of facilitating in that. Mm-hmm. Do things! And I'm here like, do what? Like, I'm here. Mm-hmm. This is the thing. Yeah. We go? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. You having a good day? Right, <laughs> you know? yes. Like, and, and then they look at me like, well, this, is, this isn't the thing I expected you to do. And I'm like, yeah, get used to this. Yeah. You know? Um, and, you know, so the, like as far as work, but as far as the world, it is a little unnerving mm-hmm. with all the wars and all the things. Oh, yeah. And all the stuff. And when you're in the public eye, people ask you questions about that stuff. And I'm here like, I am just as scared of you. I Exactly. It does, I don't have any answers. Just, but just the, 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 the powers that be... Right, the, the, the mortal powers that be are out here tootsie rolling on what they think they, you know, playing sure. God. Yeah. And we are here as humans kind of subject to their ego. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's the part that is nerve-wracking for a lot of people. And I am I am people. Yes. yes. So I know that everything's good. I know that we'll all be okay. Mm-hmm. But in the interim day-to-day, it's a little nerve-wracking mm-hmm. because I know that whenever I say something, it carries some weight. kind of weight. Yes. Oh. I just pray to say the right thing. And I always lead with love and pray, you know, pray that my words are comforting instead of inciting or making people want to fight anymore. Because there's enough of that. I try and lead them with love. You know what? That's happening. But you know what you can do is smile at someone. And what you can do is try and help the people. I know they're trying to divide us by war and by color, but here's what. You know people of other races. You know people of other spaces. It's okay. Smile. Talk to them. Yeah. That's good. Different, you know? Be a vessel, be a light. Exactly. Yeah. What legacy do you hope to leave? Legacy of love, of caring, of straightforwardness, of no excuses, of compassion, of empathy, peace. Yeah. Well, I can tell you that you carry all of those. You carry all of those. Mm -hmm. Lastly, Mm -hmm. here at Butter, of course, we love all the products. Yes. (laughs) <laughs> vitamin C, the yeah. charcoal, all, yeah. all the things. And yeah. we love to take care of our exterior with our skin. How do you take care of your internal being? I meditate a, a ton. I don't want to curse. I said this. I meditate a ton. Yes. I am the girl that's like, all right. Everything's annoying me right now. I'm gonna go be in my quiet space. Or yeah. I'll put my earpiece on and people be talking to me and I have megahertz going mm-hmm. and it makes a difference. Sure. It shifts my energy. Mm. All right. And I get I'm I'm a good I'm good at I need to breathe. I'm good at that. Like someone will be going, going like I'm like, okay, I just need to breathe a second, but keep talking, you know. I'll be like, give me five minutes, I'll be right back, you know? And I will dip and go breathe and recenter myself. That's how I do that. And in those times, I listen, you know? I listen. They say prayer is asking, meditation is listening, right, for the answer. I listen. Mm. I really, like, you know, I'm learning that too. It's like, just be quiet. Mm-hmm. It will come. And God whispers. You know? How do you know it's God's voice and not yours? It's a whisper. Mm. My voice is loud and overbearing. My <laughs> voice is just da 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 in my head at all times. Mm-hmm. Down to melodies, down to when I hear a melody. It's like a little, you know, I'll dream a melody and I'll wake up and sing it into my phone. When I'm in the way, <laughs> I like to say I'm in the way, it's loud, it's overbearing, it's it's a mile a minute, it's just noisy. It's 50, 11 things that come out of nowhere. Yeah. When it's God, it's quiet and it's simple and it's straight. It's not, it's not a game, it's just, I said this. You want me to say it again? All right, I wait till you quiet down. Mm. So this, mm-hmm. And so that's that's why I get quiet a lot. So the fruit of it is when it's calm, it's peace, it's not chaotic, it's not disruptive. Exactly. All those are different things. Exactly. Ah, oh, that's so good. Yeah. Are you happy? For the first time I can say I am. Yeah. First time in a long time. Yeah. Absolutely. So good. It's a good time. Mm-hmm. It's like... Zero, no, there's nothing I could say that I'm just like, but you know, I wish that I have tools for everything, yeah. and also 
you look at things, look at things in a big way and a small way, it's really good. Mm. Like life is really good. Humans are brilliant. Mm. I'm a really optimistic viewpoint of humans because we are. We, there's so much great we do, you know? Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, I want people to focus on that. I want people to pay attention to that. Whenever you get into a bad day, there are at least five to seven people around you that are brilliant and amazing and really good. Yeah. If they're not, find those people. Mm-hmm. Go if it's if it's a character in a book. Yeah. So a human wrote that. Mm-hmm. They're brilliant. Yeah. We do amazing things. Yeah. You know? I just I think that's there's there's always that side to look at. So I, perspective is everything. Everything. Yeah. yeah. So good. Oh. Thank you so much. So thank you for this. Thank you. It was wonderful. Okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I don't know what's gonna happen, but I know that everything is always for my good. Come on. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna let it go. Because the, the truth is too, that's where anxiety and depression comes from. It comes from holding on so tightly to something that wants to go like this. Of course we're going to be stressed. We're trying to go like, trying to latch onto it. We're trying to control oh everything. Oh my gosh, and I am the master Same. of that. 